ahead, Sarah. What do you want to say to us? So I, hello, can you hear me? I hear you. Go ahead. <clears throat> oh, okay. I just wanted to ask about the Trinity. I don't understand it. Um, but what do you think, uh, Sarah, about what you or what you heard until now? Yeah, you have no comment about everything you heard. About what he just said. Like now, I'm showing on the screen, this is your prophet um, saying that men in the heaven, they go shopping to the mall, and the mall have no images except images of men and women, and if the man desire the image, he enter it to have sex with it. Is that really the heaven you want to go to, whereas there's a mall, and you go to it, and then the man, is, is, uh, by the way, you are just a... Uh, you are not the one who will go to the mall. This is the men. The men, they go to mall and they will have sex with men. The images are images of what? Images of men and women. What is the customer? Who is the customer? A man. So if a man desire an image of a man, he enter it to have sex with it. Do you approve homosexuality, Sarah? I've never seen this before, but... um. I do not think that uh, God condones homosexuality. But, so what is this in front of you? What, one second, maybe. I think that might be daif. So? Who who say who make a daif? Well, I have to look at the Islam. But I wanted to ask about the, the Trinity. All right. Let me ask you, what what do you know about the Trinity? I asked my friend about it. She okay. said it's like water. She said it's like a water, ice, and um. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you, what do you know about the Trinity? What the Christians believe when they say Trinity? Not the explanation. <clears throat> what, oh, what what okay. is a trinity? <clears throat> From my understanding, it's uh, the Holy Ghost and um, the Word and the Father. I think the Word is Jesus, right? Yes. All right. How it's come Jesus. the Quran? Okay. How come the Quran? How come you are a young lady? You were able to find out what is a trinity, but your God, He is the All-Knowing, supposedly. He think that the Christian, they have different trinity. He think that the Christian believe that Mary is God, Jesus is God, and Allah is Jesus. And if Allah is Jesus, who, where is the trinity? To make it simple for you, you see my screen? Yes. All right. I, I, am, I think you speak Arabic, right? Uh, not very good. I'm mixed with Arab, right. but I don't speak Arabic very good. All right, no problem. So, when the Quran says that the Messiah, he is Allah. If the Messiah is Allah, then what is the Trinity? So this in your screen shows where the Quran says the Messiah is Allah. I'll, I'll read it. In yeah, it says respond. certainly the disbelief those who say Allah is the Messiah. Well, I think they mean Allah in the sense that they're saying that God is, right? No. Allah is a name of God. The Messiah is a different person. So if the Christian, they say, Allah is the Messiah. So who is the first in the Trinity? Who is the second and who is the third? Because now we eliminated two, they become one. So Allah is the Messiah. Who is the second person in the Trinity? And who is the third person in the Trinity? Allah is a name. Allah is not a word meaning God, even though it's used for God, but Allah is the name of the God of Islam, correct? 
Yes. So if the Christian they say the Messiah is Allah, you see the Quran can use the word God. The Quran can say the Christian they say the Messiah is God. No, he did not say that. He says the disbelief those who say Allah is the Messiah. So now the Messiah is Allah and Allah is the Messiah. So who is the second person of Trinity and who is the third? Um, and, I think Muslims think the uh, Holy Spirit is Gabriel. So I think that is what No, no, they... no. You see, no problem. You see, I'm not, I'm not asking you what you think as a Muslim. I'm asking uh -huh. you to think with me. If Allah claimed the Christians say, the Christian, the Christians say that the Messiah is Allah. So now those Christians, if Allah and the Messiah now they are one person, they are not two. They are not even the part of the Trinity. Allah is the Messiah, is one person. Who is the second person of the Trinity? And who is the third person of the Trinity? Uh, I'm not sure, I don't know. See, the Quran obviously is written by someone who do not know even the basic of what Christians believe. The Christian didn't believe that the Messiah is the Father. Hey Christians, do you believe that the Messiah is the Father? Any Christian here believe that the Messiah is the Father? We don't. The Father is the Father, the Son is the Son, the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit. We don't believe that it is the same person. So the Quran, if it is written by someone, he claimed to be God, he should know a basic, I mean, very simple, what the Christian believes, sit with the Christian for five minutes, they will tell you what the Trinity is. The Trinity is not believing that Jesus is the Father. No, we don't believe in that. So here you see the very base of the Quran is based in a false information about us. As an example, the Quran says that Allah said to, to Isa, did you say to the people to worship me and my mother? If there is any Christian worship Mary, you heard of? No. So why no. the Quran saying such a thing? Shouldn't the Quran knew that the Christian don't believe in such a thing? So if the Quran is written by someone he have knowledge about the Trinity, he shall not say because now Based on what the Quran is saying, the Trinity is, uh, include Mary. So now we have the second person, Mary, but still the third person is missing. Because if the Messiah is Allah, and Mary is the second person, so who is the third person? إِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا عِيسَى إِبْنُ مَرْيَمُ أَأَنْتَ قُلْتَ لِلنَّاسَ اتَّخِذُونِ وَأُمِّي إِلَهَيْنِ did you say to the people to take me as God? Here, actually, the question itself of proving the God of Islam do not know even the future, do not know who said, who did not. And, and same time, either call Allah, you ask the Muslims, when this conversation happened, they say that not, it's going to happen in the day of judgment. That will be even more, more silly and more stupid because Jesus said to Allah, well, Exalted are you, it is not for me to say that which I have no right. If I had said, if said, you would know it. So why Allah is asking? <laughs> so the whole story is so silly. Same time it says that you are Allah is the all knower. Is Allah is all knowing? Sarah? Yeah. No, he's not. Because if he's all knower, he should know that Jesus did not say that. Number two, if Allah is all knower, should know that the baby is did not make is not made as the Quran says. Number three, if Allah is all knowing, should know how Muhammad will die. In the Quran, he says, if he die or get killed, why? There's a third option. If Allah is all knower. He should not say that the sun set in murky water. If Allah is all knower, he should not say that hail come from mountains in heaven. What is your education, Sarah? In terms of what? You mean like, like do you do you have college, university? Education. What is your education? Uh, 
I finished the bachelor's degree. Okay, that means you are educated, not like me. You know, hardly I can say a few words in English, as you see. So, based on your what you understand, I'm not sure what your field you study, but heal is coming from where? Is it is it true that hail is coming from mountains in heaven? Uh, I'm not sure exactly where hail comes from. I I didn't study like. Well, did it not teach you in, in high school? Not you. This is not geography. In high school, did it not teach you that uh, rain when come through cold air, that rain will turn into hail you never heard oh, this before yeah. huh yeah. okay yes That's according true. to your quran you see because you said allah is all knowing according to your quran allah he sent hail from mountains in heaven he break it and he throw it at the ones who he don't like what kind of god he say such a statement the one who is all knowing and look what the muslim they try to change the meaning meaning do you see the word cloud here between two brackets? Yes, I see the bracket. Can we find the word the cloud there? No. That's why they put it in the bracket. They tried to fix it because Allah he said it clearly in Arabic. And he sent down from the sky from mount, isn't it? Hail to hit whoever he wish. He sent down from the sky mountains contain hail you see the screen yes I'm looking at your screen okay so if Allah is all known and we can open the interpretation even the interpretation says so chapter 24 verse number 43 the Muslim today in order to fix the all knowing God mistake they add things in the Quran to make it look better. Here it says, He sent down from heaven, mountain where is hail? He says, He sent down hail from mountains in heaven. Do you see it? Yes. And this is the official government website of the Kingdom of Jordan. This is a website owned by the King of Jordan himself, who he claimed to be descendant from Prophet Muhammad, and did it the seer of Ibn Abbas, the cousin of Muhammad himself. So, are you still convinced, Sarah, that Allah is all-knowing? Yet he think that there's a flying mountain. Did you watch the movie called Avatar? No, I did not watch it. The Avatar, like there's mountains flying in the sky, you know, and they have trees and etc. Fiction movie. But this is cannot be from God. I mean, God should not say such a thing. This is a simple knowledge. You do not need, you know, a person today who is who go to elementary school. They teach him how they can. You can even make a hail in the laboratory. You can make you can make hail in your fridge. <laughs> Correct. Yes. Yeah. So when 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 they when they say Allah is all knowing, I I say Allah is all ignorant, because there's no way this is God talking. So now going back to the Trinity. If I asked you about Allah, how Allah look like, Sarah? I don't know. Okay. So why you not don't ask yourself what Allah is made of, how Allah can be one, why Allah have a leg, why Allah have a shin, why Allah have two eyes? Why he have two hands in the right side? Why he have five fingers? But you are so worried about the Trinity. How come when it's come to the Trinity, the Muslim, he need to understand it. But when it's come to Allah, eh, we don't care. But this is your God. This is the one you should care for more than any because you don't believe in the Trinity. So Muslims, they don't dare to question who is this God they worship. And then they come and they say, how it is possible for God to be three and one? Well, because he's God, he can. I am as a human, 
Do you believe that you have a soul, Sara? Yes. Okay. Do you have a flesh and skin? Like every human being? Yes. You do? Yes. Do you have a brain? Yes. If we if we take your soul from you, are you still exist? You are dead, right? Probably not, yeah. If we take your brain from you, you are dead too, right? Yeah. If we take your flesh and we leave the soul and the brain, you are dead too. So you are three and one at the same time. You as just a normal person. Your conscious is what makes you human. Your brain, your thinking. Your flesh as a human being make you the human. But without the soul, you are nobody. You don't even exist. So, God, He made and He created everything around us based on number three. The, the, the friend of yours, she mentioned to you the water. Well, the Quran says, Do you understand what they said? Yeah, and from water we made everything. Alive. Correct. Okay. The water is about a three. H2O, correct? I'm sorry, what did you say? The water is H2O, correct? Oh, yes, yes. But look what your God, he said. As long Allah, he made from the water every living thing, is that a statement from all-knowing God or all-ignorant God? Do you believe everything is created from water? What do you think, Sarah? Uh, my understanding, um, I asked the same question before. To who? And I was told that it's the properties in water. like. It's what? The properties. Property? What property? Like, what water is made of that is found everywhere. Like, stuff like that. No, no, no. You see, he says, we let us go to the verse. We made from the water every living thing, living thing, living, living. All right? Not, 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 not stones are not living. Are they alive, stones? No. Okay. Living things is things can grow. Things have age. They live and they die, correct? Yes. All right. Now, is the shaitan created from water? No. Is the angel created from water? No. So how he says we made every living thing from water? According to the Quran, Allah created shaitan from fire. It's not even fire. It says it like a, a sumum, like, you know, guys. And then Allah, he created the angels from light. Is the angels are living things? Yes. Is the genie living thing? Mm -hmm. Is it created from water? No. So either Allah He knew what He is saying, or this is a false statement. Same time, when the God He speak wisdom, I can say, well, without water there is no life, no problem, because we know that. I mean, we, for us as a human, we need water to sustain our life because our body, maybe eighty-five or ninety percent of it, is water. Roots, vegetables, we eat, trees, they are they are based on water. Uh, so water is a source of life. This is true. But this is not a secret. When Allah, He says, every living thing we made of water, either He is a person who is saying the truth, or He is ignorant. Because this is a contradiction for what He said. Because living things... Many of them, they are created before even water was created. Based on your understanding, Allah created the angels before the water or after. I don't know. Okay. I, I know Allah created Adam before the angels or after? Well, after. After. So now, as long as the angels are not created from water, and Adam created after, 
that means the need of water is not there because the angel themselves exist without water. Do the do the angels need to drink water? No. Do they need to eat? I don't think so. No. Why? Because simply they are not created from water. Correct? Yes, if if my sense. body, yeah, if my body, most of it is made of water, then water is my necessity to survive. Angels are not made of water, so they do not need water. So when Allah says, I created everything, every living thing from water, that is a lie. Number two, did you hear that the black stone is a living being? I've never heard of that, no. Okay, according to Muhammad, that the black stone is going to come in the day of judgment and going to witness to Muslims. How the black stone is going to have mouth and eyes. Witness what? And is going to witness to Muslims, witness their sin and their good deed and bad deed. Uh -huh. If the black stone is just a stone. Muhammad, he said that the black stone is the right hand of Allah. Do you agree that a stone is a hand, is a part of Allah? A part of Allah, black stone. Yeah, because is the, if the black stone is my right hand, then Allah or Himself, all of all of Him is a stone. I don't think so. No, I'm I'm trying to uh, uh, to to reach into a logic with you. If I say to you, my hand is a stone. Is it possible that only my hand is a stone or all of me is a stone? Well, then all of you would have to be stone if okay. your hand is stone. So, so how well. Allah, he says that the black stone is the right hand of Allah. And whoever, we, you know, whoever touch it, he is touching the hand of Allah. Now the Muslim, they will say to you, this hadith is da'if, no problem. Did you ask yourself, why Muhammad, he is the black stone? Why did the Prophet kiss the black stone? Uh-huh. No, I, I never thought about that. What do you think? What, what is the reason for anyone to kiss a stone? Like, you Muslim, you say that we are, Islam is against paganism, correct? Yes. But isn't it big as paganism is kissing stones and praying in front of stones and believing stones can forgive your sin? Well, I cannot speak for other Muslims, but I do not believe that. But okay. but well, your prophet he kissed the stone, correct? Um supposedly yeah, but, I don't know. But uh, then maybe. but if your prophet kissed the stone, then why we are going uh, you know, to call ourselves not pagan when a stone is a major belief in our religion. What the purpose? Um, major belief in terms of you're saying like the practice, or are you saying just no, you see, the idea of sending a stone. Don't you think it's weird? Okay, so God now he want to build the Kaaba. He can't build the Kaaba without that stone. But what the stone for? I mean, let us say God he sent this stone as a point of uh, okay, build the Kaaba here. All right. The one who built the stone, the, built the Kaaba, according to Muslims, is the angels. Do the angels need the GPS to find where to buy? You know, or they knew exactly what Allah said. Do Allah need to put the mark? You know. So the whole idea of the stone, it doesn't make sense. Is it true that the Arab before Islam used to worship stones? Yes, I think they did. So what happened after Islam? Nothing changed. Before Islam, the Arab they use, they throw stones, they bring stones, if they find a better stone, 
you know, in the desert, they worship it. And then if they, if they find a better stone, they go through it and bring the other stone, whatever stone better. And this is the black stone. The black stone was founded by the pagan Arab before Islam. And the pagan Muslims after Islam, they worship the stone, the same stone. Read with me. Do you see it? Do you see a hadith? And this is Al-Bukhari. They cannot say this is weak, right? I see. I see. Okay. We used to worship stones. And when we found a better stone than the first one, we would throw the first one and take the later. And if we could not get a stone, then we would collect some earth dirt and bring a sheep milk and, uh, and pour that sheep milk over it and perform tawaf around it. Do you see the word tawaf? Yes, I see that. Well, isn't it what Muhammad he do around the Kaaba, tawaf? Mm -hmm. So is tawaf something the Arab do, the pagan do before Islam? Uh, yeah, I think they did something like that, yes. So Islam is a pagan religion. It's just a continue of the pagan Arab believe. Here we go. The black stone. It was exist before Muhammad. Arab kiss it before Muhammad. Arab do tawaf around it before Muhammad. So what, what make Islam even not a pagan Arab religion? I think it would be the emphasis on the oneness of God, I think. Okay, so does it make a difference if I make all the pagan God one God? Does that make me right? So now there is a group of people, they worship Shaitan, Satan. Satan. That, does that, is that a reason to follow? I mean, what is that? Okay, I'm God. Here we go. I'm one person. Worship me. Here we go. What, what one mean? Just because somebody says one God, that he is more convincing. If you see, I don't accept the God of the Hindus. The Hindus have 35 million gods, at least. But I don't reject them because they are 35 million God. I reject them because I believe they are false. If God, he said to you, I am 10. Can you tell him, don't be 10. I would like you to be nine. Can you? Are we, the, are we the one who decide to God what he can be, what he cannot? Or we are just a creation of this God, and we have no choice to say, you can, you cannot. So, I'm trying to show you that Muslims, when they try, and I'm not talking about you, I'm not trying to offend you, but when Muslims, they come and they speak of the Trinity, and they say it does not make sense, when everything in the religion does not make sense, does it make sense that Allah is one God? Yen he said in the Quran, if we would like to take a, a wife or a partner, we take it from us? Us who? If Allah is one, Allah will take a partner from us who? You ask the Muslims, okay, what we mean? They say we mean Allah, he used we in a form of respect. Okay. But are you saying to me, your God, he find that in the language, he should use we, which is not true, for he is one. So because he feel not respected enough, if we don't use we, or he don't use we. So now I call myself we, I blow myself like a balloon. I want to make myself bigger. It's like, you know, those birds, they blow their feather in the case of fight, to intimidate the other bird, or a chicken or a rooster. His feather go out because he want to make himself bigger. It is we. But behind the feather, there is nothing. There is air. It's empty. All, of, all the oil in the rooster is not even one kilo. But the second you see his feather, you think like this guy is like, he's, he look like a turkey now. So Allah is like a bird who blow his feather using the word we, because he himself is not convinced that being I is enough to be respected. 
in the top of that, he say, if we want to take a partner, we will take the partner from us. Did you ask yourself, Sarah, once, if Allah is one, he will partner with us who? Um, from my understanding, we, we and us is really just um, like a show of power uh, in terms of like the language from that time. Well, you see, that, that means Allah is lying because either I am one and then I use fake language to show a true God? I use fake language, call myself we, to make you be, I mean, oh, what is that? You know, imagine I'm trying to convince an ant that I am majestic. I mean, we are not even an ant for God. Do you agree with me, Sarah? Yes, yes. Okay, so this God, he have to use Arabic words to make himself respected, and that word does not present who is he. So he called himself we, but he's one. What logic is that? Do you have a choice to respect or not? He will smash you, he will destroy you, he will burn you. Okay, don't respect me. Here we go, there's people, they say the F word to Jesus, they say the F word to Allah, they say the F word, okay. Using we did not make respect. Proving that you are God, then people, they have no choice. Either they will face destruction or they have to believe in you and respect you and worship you. So I'm not going to worship Allah because he said we. And then Allah, if he speak good Arabic, how in the world he says, if you want to take a wife or a son, we will take it from us. I thought Allah is one. How we can explain us? You know, Sarah, if you say us, do you mean your cat? Or you mean maybe uh, uh, you and your friends, you and your family, you and your sisters? Do you agree with me? Do you mean a cat or an ant when you say us? I, I understand what you're saying. Um, I always saw it from the point of view as, um, because, you know, the Arabs at that time, uh, you know, they prized, like, you know, poetry and language and things like that. And from what I understand, it's just um, more of a, how do you say, like a literary tool. Okay, but look what you what you just said. That mean the the the... The value of Allah now is lost in the language. Because if this God, he think he is competing with the Arab in their language skills, he fail. Because if the language don't serve the purpose, then and the language just serve poetry. Well, then what the point of this poetry? Yesterday I saw a rat and the rat was so fat. And I shot him with an arrow, have electric, 1,000 watt. But, okay, I made poetry now. Okay, I understand your point. I understand what you're saying. And not only this, all the great Arab uh, 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 poet men, the history of the Arab, in their history, there are seven. All of them, they are Christians. And nowhere the Quran can even get so close to the first line of those. One of the very normal knowledge in literature that if you keep repeating the same sentence many, many times, that means you have a weak language. The Quran have nothing but repeating same things. And there's no meaning. If you read the Quran, like which chapter, like this is the chapter of the prophets. But you start reading, where is the prophet stories? What is this? And then when he speak, he jump from Noah to Abraham. I want to show you an example of the logic of the, of the God of Islam. 
to show you how poor he is, and he have a low, low IQ. Do you see the verse in front of you, uh, Sarah? Uh, the one in gray, yes. Okay. Do you understand what he's saying? Um, I, I I understand. That one sentence is saying. Explain it to me. I'm listening. So, um, okay, I'll just read it out first. Oh, people of the scripture, uh, you know, Jews, Christians, why do you dispute about Ibrahim and the Torah and the Injil were, uh, were not revealed till after him? Have you then no sense? So essentially, it's just asking um, why are people, you know, um, having an issue with uh, the Torah and the Injil not being revealed until after Abraham? So what is the reasoning? The reason is you have no right and no logic to argue about it because you came after, correct? Yes. But isn't it Islam came at the end? <laughs> I see your point. No, but do you see how stupid it is? If I say to you, Sarah, how you argue, let us say you are Christian and I'm a Muslim. I say, hey, Sarah, how you argue about uh, uh, Abraham and the Bible came after. Based on this stupid logic, the one who came after, he cannot argue about the one who came before it. But that means Muhammad, he is the last one who have the right to argue. How this is, can be a statement of a wise God? The one who come at the end based on this logic, have the, no right to argue with the one king before. So now, based on this, the Christians cannot argue with the Jews. The Muslims cannot argue with the Christians. For the more you are close to Abraham, the more you are right. The more you are behind, the more you are wrong, and you have no right. Have you no sense? Do you see how stupid this statement? I understand what you're saying. No, you don't say. You see, you are saying, I understand. I'm not asking you if you understand. I'm saying, do you see with me how stupid it is? Shouldn't, I mean, if I'm, if I'm debating you, I'm trying to prove you wrong. How in the world I prove you wrong by saying, that the one who come after cannot argue with the one came before. If I'm the last um, one. I, I just wanted to discuss the Trinity, to be honest, but um, I, I, I wasn't interested in a debate, but I understand. I'm not debating you, Sarah. You are no match to debate me, and nobody can debate me. I'm just trying to help you, to show you that when the Muslim they speak about let us understand the Trinity, I'm showing everybody, and you just prove it, you are not interested to know your religion. And this is why I say, and I'm not insulting you, don't be offended, I'm just being truthful with you. I find Muslims are the biggest hypocrite in the history. Because if you are not interested in knowing your religion, 
how in the world you are interested to know the Trinity? Why the Trinity is so important for you? I will tell you why. Because you must then think that the Trinity is a weak point in the Christian faith. We believe in one God, they believe in three and one. How that work? Ha ha ha. Let us laugh at them. In fact, the Trinity proving everything around us. The golden ratio is based on three. All the buildings in the world to be beautiful have to go with the number three. Your religion based on number three. Allah, Jibreel, Muhammad. Your religion based, based in everything number three. When you pray, you have to use the word three, everything you do. You, when you call for the Adhan three times, when you fast three days, when you say Allahu Akbar three times, even Muhammad, when he shake hands, he say Assalamu Alaikum three times. Everything in Islam is based on number three. And then they say to you, how the Christian believe in God, he is a three and one. Well, I can answer you very easy. My God is a true God. And what is impossible for your God to do is not impossible for my God to be. This is why we see in the Quran Allah saying, how can Allah have a son without having a girlfriend? Well, my God, he did not need a girlfriend to have a son. For he is the almighty God. When your God question his ability and he say word by word, how can he? It's not the Christian saying, how can he? It is him. How can he? I mean, how even Muhammad thought for a second to say such a sentence. How can he have a children when he have no girlfriend? Well, are we talking about God or we are talking about Christian prince who don't have a girlfriend or a wife, therefore he cannot have a son? Is that a logic of the almighty God? Well, God can do. God can create from nothing everything. God can say be is going to be. But God who says, how can he have a son? He is a questioning the ability of himself. So here you see that the one who wrote the Quran have a very low IQ. It cannot be from a smart, intelligent being. Is not even a rat. Rat are smarter. They will not say such a statement. So when we speak about Trinity, if you want to say how I can understand the Trinity, that is a hypocrite question. Why? Because how I can understand the power of God? Can you? Can you comprehend the power of God, Sarah? No. So how come we are asking how I can understand? This is the power of God. God is a three and one. How God, he say, be is going to be. Can you explain it to me? Nobody can explain it. For me, it's impossible. I can say be, 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 be from now until next, next century. And nothing will happen. So either we accept that God is almighty and we cannot comprehend God no matter what we heard about him. For he is the almighty God. Almighty mean all might. All might belong to him. But as you see, Allah cannot be the Almighty. How can he have a son without having a girlfriend? When the God of Mary, he can make Mary have a son, yet she have no boyfriend. The God of Muhammad, he himself described his ability saying, how can I am nobody? I cannot have a son without. If the Muslim will say, no, Allah is trying to use our logic. Well, that is even more stupid because Allah supposedly is not a man and he don't have a gender. So what do you mean sahiba and girlfriend? What is logic? What is logic? And that will take us to other point. You heard that the Arab, they believe Allah have three daughters, correct? Um, yes, I, I saw something about that before. All right. Allah, he likes to have children, boys or girls? 
You mean for the the daughters? I, I think that was in uh, pre-Islamic Arabia. There's like some belief. Ah. Of, uh, so pre-Islamic yeah. Arabia, if the guy he have a daughter, uh, he will be upset, correct? Yes, he hmm. would be. All right. What about Allah? If he have a daughter, he will be upset. In Islam, Allah cannot have a daughter. Yeah, I'm asking you a specific question. If Allah, well, if that were to happen, huh? is that what you're saying? Are yeah. you saying if that were to happen, or like did Allah complain why you have sons and I have daughters? <laughs> You see, the Quran says that the Arab, if you say to them, you have a daughter, they get upset, but the one who get upset is Allah. Look what the Quran says. Allah, he said to the Arab, well, like, what the heck? For you, the males, and for me, the females? <laughs> it turned to be Allah is an Arab guy too. Manat and Allah and Al-Uzza. The Arab, they believe that they are the daughters of Allah. What the response to, of Allah to them? He says, what? For you, the male, and for me, the female? So how the Quran says the Arab, they get upset if you say to them, you have a daughter? It turned to be the Arab, they worship the daughters. The Arab not only they like their daughters, they worship females. Their gods, the goddess is females. And this is the proof of the lies of the Muslim when they say, the Arab, they kill their daughters. Nowhere in the Quran says that. This is a big fat lie. As you see, the Arab, they worship goddess, so they are daughters of Allah. And the God of Islam, he, look how silly the argument like what? You take the males and for him the females? This is indeed is a division most unfair. <laughs> so now if we switch, we make Allah have a boy and they have the girls, that will make Allah happy. How that can be from God? What do you think, Sarah? Um, I was thinking that the mentioning of the goddesses, I think like a, in ancient times in general, not just Arabia, a goddess is much different than a human woman. So I can understand how they can worship a goddess and still have hatred or some type of disdain for having a female born. A, a, a little girl but um so you saying sorry i'm going uh i'm backtracking a little bit right now but so are you saying that even understanding jesus's divine nature is beyond our comprehension or is that no i will go back step a little bit and we will go back to jesus first of all the arab and the muslim did not believe that the daughters of Allah are not a human. In fact, Muhammad, he claimed that he killed the daughter of Allah. And this is additional proof that Muhammad is a fraud because either the daughters of Allah are a fiction or the daughters of Allah are real. You can go right now and search, search for the expedition of Khalid ibn Walid. In that expedition, Allah Prophet, he sent Khalid and he commanded him to kill the daughter of Allah. And each time Khalid, he go there, he do something, the Prophet, he says, you did not finish it yet, until he killed the women. And that woman described as a black woman. And Khalid, he killed her. And then when he killed her, the Prophet, he said, now you killed the daughter of Allah. So if you say that the Arab they believe because they are not a human, so they are willing to worship a female goddess because she does not exist anyway. 
but this is not true either Muhammad's story is a lie and had he killed really the daughter of Allah and if it is a true he killed her that means the daughter of Allah is exist and it is real do you understand me yes okay now going back to uh, you can search right now by the way when you are talking to me the ex exhibition of Khad ibn Walid and you will see it how Muhammad he sent him first time second time until he killed her now when I say to you that nobody can understand the power of God doesn't mean that we Christian don't understand what the Trinity but I'm just showing you the hypocrisy of the Muslims. They knew nothing about their God. They don't even dare to discuss how Allah he sit on the throne. They don't dare to discuss how Allah leg look like. They don't dare to discuss that Allah he changed even his shape. They don't dare to discuss how Allah come down if he is the almighty and he don't go inside his creation. But when it's come to Christianity, they say how God can be inside his creation. But Allah is in the heaven, which is a creation, is okay. Allah come down to the lowest heaven, is okay. Allah, uh, 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 the Quran says, Fatadallah, the Muslim, they say this is the angel, which is false, because the Quran is so clear. Allah, he came down using a rope. No problem. The second we say Trinity, they say it is impossible. So to make it simple for you, there is no need to explain the Trinity. God is a three and one in the same time. How that is hard to understand. How God can be what he is God. How Jesus can be, well, he proved it. Name for me one thing Jesus did, Allah can do. Allah cannot resurrect Muhammad. Muhammad, he died. Muhammad, he died from sickness and poison. Muhammad, in his last days, the last four years of his life, he cannot even walk. He keep fainting. He keep doing diarrhea. He pee on himself. He is the same as Ahmad Mirza Ghulam. He claimed to be the Messiah, but he died because of diarrhea. So when we say the Messiah, did you ask yourself, first of all, why even the, the Christian, they believe the Messiah is God? Shouldn't we ask ourselves, why even they think this, uh, I mean, okay, he came to them as a man. So why he is, why they think he is God? Well, obviously, for he is doing what God can do. Not only he raised people from death, He can command nature. He can create from the mud the bird. He can heal the leper. He can make the blind see without surgeries. If you watch the video of Mufti Mink, he says, Jesus, he moved his hands on the crowd and thousands and thousands of people will be healed. And this is your prophet. If his God is true, can't his God heal him? He needs Jesus, not Allah. So for us, when we believe, we believe in what Jesus said. Jesus clearly said, who is he? Before Abraham I am, Jesus said. I am from above, you are from below, Jesus said. I was with you, Father, before the world was, Jesus said. The Bible is full where Jesus explained that he is God's son. It's all over the Bible. They say the Muslim, where Jesus is, I'm God, worship me. So the Trinity is so simple. Our God is a three and one. I have no right to ask him, why he don't make himself three, four and one, seven and one, ten and one. He is three and one. This is, this is how he is. This is not about, I cannot explain, but this is about how he is. I do not design God as I wish. God, he designed me as he wish. You Muslim, you forget who is God when you want. 
and you question only when it's come to Christianity. When it comes to your God, you go mute. Did you ask yourself, Sarah, why Allah have two hands in the right side of his shoulder? No, I don't. Why? Because that would be blasphemous. Ah, so now you are doing blasphemies against Christians. It's okay. But because now the Muslim, they say to you, if you question how God he is, you go to hell. But don't you see the hypocrisy of this cult? How come we cannot ask Allah how he is and why he is like that? It's a blasphemous. But we can make fun of the God of the Christians. We are not allowed to know about our God, but we are allowed to question their God. Don't you see the hypocrisy? It's like somebody his clothes is so dirty. So dirty. He just came from the sewage and he's asking me, why you have an ink in your sleeve here? Huh? Tell me, tell me, what is the reason for this ink? I mean, you just came from the sewage. And this is how I see Islam. Islam is a sewage. I mean, in the front of everybody, Sarah, I do friendly challenge to you as my sister. I challenge you to name for me one chapter in the Quran is not stupid. Is that fair, guys? Name for me one chapter in the Quran is not full of stupidity. Can you? You see, I'm not asking you, I'm not picking up a cherry, I'm not picking up, a, I said, give me a chapter in the Quran is not stupid. You cannot find one. For this book, from the first page to the last page, is a chain of stupidity. Are you looking for a good one, Sarah? Yes, let me, let me look. Uh, so Sarah, she is not confident with her book. She can't just throw any of a chapter. She has to look for one sound maybe good. <laughs> You see, they are not even confident about their God. Um, yeah, because if you are confident, you say, okay, take anyone, here we go, anything. You know, give me a number, give me any name, but you, know, you have to search. Try to find something, maybe, uh, you know, hard to find something wrong in it. But that will not work. Sarah, she is, uh, she is looking for uh, a page in the Quran. It's not a stupid, which is impossible. No, I've been very respectful so far. Um, no, no, I you see, Sarah, no. my, my friend, listen, this is not about respectful respect. You see, try not to be a hypocrite like the whole world. When I say the Quran is a stupid, I'm not, I'm not being disrespectful. I'm telling you what I believe. Do you want me to say to you, I respect your Quran? When in my heart, I laugh at it. Is that what you want? Should we encourage hypocrisy? I'm not asking you to lie. Okay. So now, respect based on what you are saying. And most of people, what they do is based on lying. Like somebody says to me, well, I am uh, Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, respect my belief. I say, I don't respect your belief. You are going to go to hell. I don't respect a belief will take people to hell. So we should learn decency. Don't do what Muhammad did. Muhammad, he was always a hypocrite. This is what the Muslim, they say in stages, because he don't dare to say what he believe until he is now in control, and then he can force things. He's not a prophet of God. Prophet of God, he said things no matter who is in the front of him, like John the Baptist. John the Baptist don't have an army, yet he stood in the front of a king and he paid his life for what he stood for. Until now, Sarah, she could not find the chapter in the Quran, do not have mistakes. What's going on, Sarah? Are you asking a friend I, to help you? 
to give you a chapter don't have stakes or stupid ones well it's pretty late somebody's up so which chapter does not have stupid things well i was thinking about um certainness all right, let us go to chapter she chose in Annas. That's wonderful. Remember, Sarah, this is your choice. I did not choose it, correct? Did I pay you? Sarah, did I pay you to say to choose it? Be honest. Did I pay? No, did I pay you? No, okay. I would much prefer to remove myself from the stage and you can. All right. Well, you, you know, you gave me one of the most stupid chapters in the Quran. Read with me carefully. Say, I seek refuge by Allah. All right? All right. The king of mankind, the god of mankind, from the evil who whisper, whisper in the heart of the men. By, by the way, this is all additional. The one who withdraws from the whispers in one's and heart after remember Allah. How that is, and then he's saying, who whisper in the breast of man. You just said that already. I mean, isn't it this verse here just said all of this? He repeat again, who whisper in the breast of mankind, of the jinn and men. Hold on. If I say this, shaitan, he cannot whisper into me. False. Muhammad received satanic verses when he was reading Quran, when he was even praying in the mosque, and he bowed down to the three daughters of Allah. Seek refuge by Allah, the king of mankind. What king of mankind? You lower yourself. Which one is you? Are you the king of mankind or you are the god of mankind? If he say he is the king of the kings, I say, okay, but he is just the king of mankind. What about the genies? He's not the king of the genies? <laughs> the God of mankind. Okay, hold on. The chapter is speaking about how to protect you from the genies. If you are the God of mankind only, how you can protect me from the jinn? And then he says, who whisper in the breast of mankind from the genie and men. Hold on. This is chapter saying that the one who whisper is a shaitan. Now, Allah changed his mind. It turned to be the genie and the men. Let me ask you, Sarah. Do man whisper in your chest? Are you there? I'm here. I'm here. Sorry. Do do men whisper in your chest? What do you mean by that? You know what uh, waswasa, right? Waswas is not even whisper. Waswasa is speaking to you in your mind, correct? Mm. It's not somebody saying, you know, like speaking to you really in your ears. No, it's somebody inside you. He speak to you. Do you agree? Oh, I understand what you're saying. No, no, don't say I understand. You, you know, I notice that you dodge what I am saying by saying I understand. What? No, this oh, is not I what I'm saying. Was, was, if you mean whisper, like whisper in English and whisper in Arabic is not the same thing. Exactly, so but was, 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 is not was, whisper. Was, was, oh. Exactly, but whisper is not waswasa. Was, was, was is speaking in your chest inside you from within you. Do you agree? So you're saying speaking shows from, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the end of your... When, when waswas is not someone speaking by words in your ears, is somebody, mm, yes. is, is some, something inside you, and he is speaking to you within you, correct? Yes, that's my understanding of... Um, Thank you. How a man, how a man, he can do that? How a man, he can do that inside you? 
Um, from my understanding, it would be Sahar. What's Sahar? Like the Waswasa, doesn't that come from Sahar? No. Sahar is full control. Sahar means magic. Is not Waswasa. Mm -hmm. Waswasa is speaking to you. Magic is controlling you by using certain words, which is stupid to believe. Here, it says that he is going to do waswas, which means speaking inside you, like do this, go commit sin, have fornication, kill. Is that correct? Do you agree? Yes. Okay, but this is inside you, right? He's not mm -hmm. like a. He's not a person next to you speaking to you, right? He is inside you speaking mm -hmm. to you. Okay, who is the man he can do that to you? Mm. I see. Okay. Uh, you keep saying to me, I see your point. I but... see where you're going with this. I see where you're <laughs> going with this. It's like, it's one thing you have men highlighted, but you don't have gin highlighted. Yeah, but because I, men, they cannot do that. Men, they cannot really go inside you and talk inside you. If we say mm -hmm. jinn is a shaitan, you know, I can say, okay, well, uh, uh, shaitan, he can, you know, really uh, give me ideas uh, uh, within me. But man, he cannot. So the chapter here is contradicting itself because the holy chapter supposedly is about seeking refuge from shaitan. Al-waswas al khannas And look how funny the Arabic language, al khannas are, are you serious? This is not even a language of a kid, he's a teenage. And now, let us examine this chapter. Was Muhammad receiving bad influence from the waswas al-khannas? Are you searching Gogra, Sarah? No, I'm, I'm looking at what you have highlighted. Yeah. So, if this is what you need to do, and that will protect you from the shaitan, well then, everything happened to Muslim should not happen. Everything happened to Muhammad should not happen. To make it simple for you, sir. Well, I, I was, I was trying to. Um, so, isn't that also? Can't that also come from our own desires from within? Well, if this is from your desire, this means Allah is he's lying, because he's accusing the shaitan and the men. And here you need. Well, can't can't uh, the man be you yourself? Can't you what? Like the suggestions of like. Um, like you yourself, for example, some people might um, be enticed by fornication or enticed then, by other then types he, of Then he is using the wrong word in Arabic, you waswas. You see, if Allah, he speaks with Arabic, he should not use that word. I can say that this person mislead this man, but when I say you waswas and you agreed with me that this is someone speaking inside me, a man, he cannot go inside me. A man, he can speak to me, says, hey, CP, let us go party. Uh, there's a woman there. There's uh, money there. Uh, let us rob a bank, you know. But he is not really going inside my chest. Plus, here it's assuming, and I want you to tell me to confirm to me, that the one who whispered to us to do wrong is shaitan. Is that true? The one who will mm -hmm. send, the one who sent, this is Allah he sent to Muhammad, correct? Yes. Okay. When Muhammad he say this, he is going now to be armed against shaitan, correct? Yes. But isn't it the Quran says Allah is the one who sent shaitan to Muhammad? <laughs> How Allah is advising Muhammad how to prevent shaitan from influence oh hold on sorry a 
And Allah is the one who sent the shayateen against the prophets. How Allah in one chapter he says, Say this, seek refuge by Allah from the one who whisper in the chest, from the shaytan, shaytan of the man and the genie. Then we find the Quran saying it clearly, the one who sent shaytan and the one who made shaytan from men and genie, enemy to the prophet is Allah. Okay. What? Okay. Look what it says. Had we willed, they have not done it. So shaitan, in fact, is only a game from Allah. This is a joke. You gave me a verse or a chapter which supposedly is the smartest. It turned to be the stupidest because if Allah is the one sending shaitan from the men and human and genie to attack me and to mislead me, and to give me to garbage, and then he says, say this, I seek refuge by Allah. And then I find the Quran saying, he is the one who sent them on me. And the shaitan, they are not bad. So why he call him bad names in the chapter there? Because Allah is the one who sent them. Had we not done it, had we not willed it, you know, willed, they would not have done it. Who is the one who sinned and he made enemy from the devils and mankind to the prophets? Allah. So like I say to you, I want to give you a medicine, antibiotic, and I want to send you the virus. What the point? Why well, you want to make the guy sick? And did that work? No. Muhammad received satanic verses. Muhammad, he did, uh, as an example, chapter at Tahrim, chapter 66. He, according to the Quran, he forbid himself, which is not lawful, which means he is making something against Allah. And this is obviously from shaitan. And Allah said to him, why you ban yourself from what I did not ban you? So did it work? No. Ayashishi confirmed that Muhammad was controlled by black magic. So did this chapter work? No. Who sent the shaitan? Allah. Who made the shaitan the enemy of the prophet? Allah. Who said to prophet, says this to protect yourself from shaitan? Allah. Was shaitan able to control Muhammad? Yes. What do you think? Well, I... Oh, he left. Okay, well, I... I never really um, thought about it in that way before, to be honest. But, um... Yeah. I think this is definitely uh, a lot, so I have to consider. Sarah, listen to me. The Lord is my witness. I'm speaking to you as my young sister. This is the most trashy, stupid religion ever. Nothing in it makes sense. Doesn't make sense even for a cat. So I'm spending my time. You see, I there's a guy, he want to join, I kicked him out because I want to give the time to you. I feel really bad for you. You have no idea how stupid this religion is. This guy was trying to make poetry and he failed. This is why the meaning is messed up. This is why he is all over the place. This is why he contradicts himself. In fact, the logic of contradiction proving Islam to be stupid because when the Quran says, if this is a book made by other than Allah, you will find in it contradiction. 
Well, there's millions of writers, they never have a contradiction in their book. Does that mean they are Allah? Yet even that he could not hold together. Even the own condition who he created, he could not maintain. This is cannot be. I mean, imagine Jesus saying that. What the heck is this? Go and read what Jesus said. Just go and see the wisdom. Go and see the amazing spiritual, not only wisdom of the brain, it is the food of the heart. The Lord is, is my witness. When I hear the Bible, my, my the, the hair in my body stand up. For the word of Jesus touch you, heal you, change you. What is this? This is how we can fight shaitan. I seek refuge by Allah. And then shaitan, he do what he do. Either I am an intelligent God or I am a stupid God. And I believe there is God who is a stupid. Yes, that is the devil. The devil is making fun of you, all of you. Shaitan, he fart. Shaitan, he play with your anus. Shaitan, he round himself around the penis. Shaitan, do boom boom to Muslim women. Shaitan, he sleep in your nose. Shaitan, he piss in your ears. Shaitan, he jump in your mouth. I mean, what the heck with this wisdom? Is that a speech of a person have a brain? of a mosquito? You know the Messiah, he said, from their fruits, you shall know them. And I advise you, Sarah, to go and check the fruit of the Messiah. And look at this madness here. What is this? Half of the Quran is about Muhammad testicles and his private part. Any believing women, she want to offer herself to the prophet so the prophet can boom, boom her. Is that really a book of God? Is that what ma making God worry now? The world in chaos, people dying, war, uh, hunger, flood, uh, volcanoes, and then any believing women, she offer herself to the prophet. How that will make the world better? Hey, prophet, why you forbid yourself from what Allah made lawful for you? What he's talking about? Muhammad, he was found with his slave having sex with her. The wife, she got embusted. He sent her to visit her father. She went there. Her father, he said to her, I did not call for you. She felt suspicious. She went back home. So right away, she found Muhammad in the top of the slave. She said to him, in my day and in my bed, you're filthy. Is that the prophet of God? And then he promised her he will make her father caliphate. Please don't tell anybody. <laughs> and then the wife, she told the father, she told the neighbors, and look at this verse. Look at this chapter. And then remember when the prophet disclosed a matter of confidence to one of his wives, Hafsa, so when she told it to other wife, Aisha, Allah made it known to him. Amazing. I mean, the whole town knows about it. I mean, Hafsa told Aisha, Aisha told the neighbor, the neighbor told Muhammad. I mean, look, look at Allah, guys. Allah told him. And then Allah informed him part of it. Look, Allah don't want to tell him the whole story. Only part. <laughs> I mean, this is God talking, really. Is it? This is a Mickey Mouse story in cartoon, make more sense? So Allah, he informed him apart, and he left apart. Oh, really? Seriously? Then he told her, Hafsa, thereof, she asked, like, what the heck is that? I'm getting dizzy. This is God talking? Are you serious? Yes, brother. So, 
Thereof she said, who told you this? What, this is Quran? She said, who told you this? No way. What she was doing then, she was doing her nails. This is God talking. And this is the word of God. It turned to me, she said, he said, Aisha, she said, Hafsa, she said, he told her, she told him. This is a ghost of a story for my grandmother. She is 20, 200 years old. This is the Quran. Nobody can write like it. The whole Quran here is just she said, he said. He told her who told you. She told him. I told you not to tell him. So she told her. And then she told Aisha. And Aisha she told Hafsa. And Hafsa she said to Aisha. And then Allah made it known to him. What the heck? How in the world anyone can accept such a thing to be from God? And then Allah says to them, if you repent, repent for what? It's his fault. He is the guy who is sleeping around. They should repent. Shouldn't I say, I mean, you just told him why you forbid yourself. You should say to him, you should repent. So obviously, Muhammad, he fabricated Quran to serve his private part. They found him having sex with this slave. He promised he will never do it again. He got horny again. He made this verse, says, Allah said to me, why you forbid yourself from what Allah made lawful for you? And you know what, Sarah? I want to give you a homework. I will give you 10,000 years to find me where Allah made it lawful for Muhammad to have sex with his six slaves who is not captive of war. Just to show you how stupid the one who made the Quran. I challenge all the Muslims who they are listening. Listen, Abdul. Potato, tomato, around the world, Afghanistan, Pakistan, wherever you are. Can you show me the verse where Allah made law for Muhammad? To have sex with his slave, which is not Malakatul Yameen, which means capture of war. I challenge you. Where Allah, he made it law for him. To have sex with a slave girl who is not captured in war. Nowhere. You will not find it in the Quran anywhere. Still, you want to believe in this, Sarah? I didn't know what a lot of this. I didn't know a lot of this, to be honest. Um, I, I, you know, I just, I, I think I learned a lot today, and this is the first time I've heard of a lot of these, uh, these things and verses and a hadith. But you're still going to be Muslim after all of this? Not really, no. I'm happy to hear that, Sarah. Guys, the Lord, he helped Sarah today. It's not me. The Lord, he hold her hand. The wise God, he is guiding her within her heart. And she just announced she is out of Islam. We are happy for you. I ask everybody here to pray for her. Because remember... We Christians, we believe that there is a happiness in the kingdom of God for one soul is saved. Sarah, I would like to invite you to believe in the Messiah, our Lord and Savior. Now you are free from Islam and from the lies of Muhammad. Would you believe in Jesus to be your Savior? The wise Lord, the one who love you, not like Islam condemn you for being a woman. The one who said, he and she, they will be the same as angels, which mean me and you, we will be equal in heaven. I will not be favored because I'm a male and you will not be 
dismissed because you are a female. You and me and all those people here will be children of God. I invite you right now, Sarah, to accept the Messiah as your Savior. I'll have to um, study it because I don't know enough about Christianity in general, to be honest. That's good. You see, we don't want you to say I believe without believing. This is not Islam. We don't want you to say Shahada. You witness to Jesus by knowing Jesus, not by saying, I just believe. That's why Jesus said to us clearly, read the books, find the truth, and the truth will set you free. And the Messiah made it clear when he said, I am the truth. I am the truth. I am the resurrection. I am the life. I am the Alpha. I am the Omega. I am the beginning. I am the end. I am the living God. So take your time. And I'm so happy that I did not give up on you. And you made the right decision today to leave the cult of Islam. Feel free to join us anytime, Sarah. I will be happy to help you. Read the Bible. Study it. And when you feel that the Lord touched your heart, is there always for you. The Lord, he says, knock at my door, but I will open for you. Come to me, the tired one, and I will comfort you. And all of us, we are tired. We are tired of lies. We are tired of deception. We are tired of violence, bloodshed, killing, hatred. We are tired from everything around us. We are waiting for the Lord, the Messiah, the Lord of justice. The one who will protect the weak before the strong. Islam does not protect the weak. Islam protect the strong against the weak. And he are the weak in Islam. He made you nobody. You are just a box to make babies. You are just a woman in the kitchen. You are just a slave. Muhammad he said, if the woman, she sucked the buzz of her husband, she did not do enough to him. Suck the buzz? Why? Even he said, if the women, if I can, if I command the women to worship their husband, they did not do enough. Why? Because you are nothing. And then they marry you, and then they divorce you by text message, and then they beat you, and then they abuse you, and then if you divorce you three times, you have to find a new husband, then you come back, it's nothing but a life of an abuse. That is the devil plan. Muhammad he said, women they advance in the shape of shaitan, and they retreat in the shape of shaitan. If Muhammad said that about my mother in front of my face, I will kill him. If there's any one of you accept that? If there's any of you Muslim would like to print this and put it in the top of your mother grave? Women advance in the image of shaitan and she live in the image of shaitan? So you are born of shaitan. Isn't it your mother is where you are born from, Muhammad? What a filthy, disgusting human being. They are shaitan, but he want to have a lot of them. So he can abuse them. When the Lord, he said, from their fruit you shall know them. He meant men and women. We know the good women from the bad women. The same way we know the bad man from the good man. From their fruits, not from their gender. All of us, we know who is Mary. Do Mary advance in the image of Shaitan? And she retreat in the image of Shaitan, you filthy Muhammad? What a shame for a disgusting person you are. If there's anything you want to say, Sarah?
I feel like that my eyes are open to a lot of things that I wasn't aware of before, you know, just, um, even just inconsistencies, you know, things that I didn't think about or, I mean, it's just, it's a lot, <laughs> it's a lot to be honest, but I'm just happy that, um, we had this discussion and I definitely am coming up with something, you know, um, yeah, I think that's, I just have to do my research, learn more, um, and I think a lot of it will come with time. Well, I'm happy for you, Sarah, and I ask everybody here to pray for her, our sister Sarah. She sounds a wonderful lady. She decided to open her heart to the Lord, and we hope that the Lord will grab her from her hands soon and will deliver her to the safe heaven, the kingdom of God, where she will be beloved as a child of God, not as a slave. Thank you, Sarah, for being here. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Well, we spent many hours, but I'm happy that we did not, it was not a waste of time. And if I say to you how many people every day they contact me leaving Islam, because most of them, they don't dare to go online and even use their voice. It's an avalanche. But, you know, Sometime I asked myself, I did not even see my yard today. I went outside just for five minutes. Because all day, almost either I'm answering this person or that person or answering comment, refuting somebody. But at the end of the day, happiness will be in the kingdom of God when somebody is saved. And the Lord, he command us to be fishermen. We go and we fish so we can bring those who are drowning in the ocean of evil, grab them from their hand, save them from their own mind, which is deceived by the devil, and deliver them to the Lord, and he will take care of them. So we pray to our sister Sarah that she will be delivered, and she will believe very soon in the Messiah, and we are so happy that she decided to leave Islam. And as you see, I did not share with her even one of billion of what I know about Islam. But the second you start connecting the dots together, you will see how silly, stupid this cult is. Very silly. I want to say thank you all. I wish I can stay longer already. I'm getting so tired. My, heart, my eyes hurt. And even my voice is almost gone. So I want to say thank you all for being here. I will try to come here tomorrow if I could, if my voice is still good. And until I see you soon again, don't forget to subscribe in Ramble, in Patreon. It's for free in Patreon anyway, and people don't even donate. Uh, and in, in, in YouTube. Uh, so you can inform, because in YouTube, they don't even give you notification when we go live. At least in Patreon, they will give you an email and it's for free. You don't need to donate anything. No? It's just like Facebook. When I post a link that I'm going live, you will receive a notification from the app to your phone or to your email uh, that Christian Prince, he posted something. Right? If you wish. Until, you, uh, uh, until we see you again, I say, may the Lord bless you all. God is good. So is Jesus. I mean to that. By his name, we are victorious. Take care.